All right, what is going on, everyone? First and foremost, I want to say thank you for being here right now, watching this video. I do really appreciate your time, and I would really appreciate if you do consider subscribing because it truly does help me out a lot. Now, I'm going to be reacting to Keith D killed Tupac on camera. How T how Keith Keefy D killed Tupac on camera. Now we all know Tupac was killed, and we we never know by who for years but it's just now you know coming out that keith d was the one to be to basically do it or be or have a large part in tupac's death and not only that but also diddy man um he's saying diddy paid him and things like that we diddy diddy is just you know i don't even have to say too much about diddy because it's a lot and I'm, not, and I'm not just gonna go on an absolute yap session about diddy but it's, it's just like let's just say diddy has a, has killed a lot of people let's just say that on the on the low um and it's just like you know if if you actually want to find out and overall diddy just has a lot of allegations on his name so if you want to find out about that, just do your own research is really all I can say. But without further ado, not going to do too much yapping. So without further ado, let's play the video, see what it's talking about. 27 years. 27 years. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D., for the murder of Tupac Shakur. On September 29th, 2023, Dwayne Keith Davis, alias Keefe D, was taken into custody by Las Vegas Metropolitan Police in connection with the murder of arguably the most influential rapper in hip hop's history. For most, Tupac's murder is shrouded in mystery. However, for those who closely follow news in the hip hop world, Keefe D's involvement in the rapper's death was an open secret with the motive behind the hit being caught on camera. So, who is Keefe D? What was his role in Tupac's death? And why did it take 27 years for the former gangster to finally end up in handcuffs? Tupac's killer arrested. I wish that my son was here and that he could go and uh, lie down in my bed and come out of my room and say, Ma, what'd you cook? I miss his being. He was my son and I miss him as my, my baby, my boy who I loved respected. This was Afeni Shakur, Tupac's mom almost brought to tears by the death of her son. She would have loved to get closure regarding her son's tragic death. However, Mrs. Afeni Shakur passed away on May 2nd, 2016, after going into cardiac arrest at her home at the age of 69. And as we will see, only two years after her death, the case regarding her son's death would be opened again, leading to an arrest. While Tupac's mom waited for the cops to get justice for her slain son for 20 years, the rapper's fans had to wait for 27 years. Well, the wait is finally over. After 27 excruciating years, one of the men believed to have had a hand in the murder of Tupac was arrested. Las Vegas Metro Police took Dwayne Keefe D. Davis into custody Friday. He's being held on charges related to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. Earlier in July, cops raided Keefe And the crazy thing about this whole situation is the cops didn't even come out and, you know, basically do all, do all of this by themselves. They didn't catch this guy just off doing their work. You get what I mean? Keefe D basically snitched on himself. He snitch, came out, snitched on himself, um, saying Diddy couldn't even throw him a bone. You get what I mean? Pretty sure, pretty sure back then Diddy paid him a million to do the hit on Tupac, right? Basically paid him a million to do a hit on Tupac, right? And after that, it was just like his million was gone, bro. His million, his millions of dollars were gone. It's just like he's asking Diddy, you can't even throw a brother a, brother a bone. And it's just like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I, I got nothing else to live for. I got no money. It's just like, bro, you can't even throw me a bone. You can't even help me out a little bit. It's just like he's depending on Diddy. So it's just like he snitched on himself and he's basically planning on taking Diddy down with him. But it just didn't seem to go that way. He basically went down by himself and it doesn't really seem like he cares but all i'm saying is the cops didn't really do their job properly that's the way it seems D's home in Henderson, Nevada. An affidavit filed to obtain the warrant states that police were looking for notes, writings, ledgers, and other handwritten or typed documents concerning television shows, documentaries, YouTube episodes, book manuscripts, and movies concerning the murder of Tupac Shakur. Apart from the electronics, investigators left the former gangster's home with USB and hard drives, photographs, a copy of Vibe magazine featuring Tupac, and a copy of the Compton Street Legends book, co-authored by Keefe D and Yusuf Ja. According to the warrant, investigators were generally searching for items 
items that would provide evidence of motive or even reveal the identity of Tupac's killer. So what exactly gave Keefe D away? How was he able to evade the cops for 27 years? And will he finally be put behind bars for Tupac's murder? As it turns out, somewhere along the way, Keefe D felt emboldened to shout from the rooftops what happened the night Tupac died. It all started in 2008 when Keefe D was arrested in a PCP ring case. According to reports, the feds had been gathering evidence on the drug ring that Keefe D ran and had enough intel to put him away for 25 years. As cops normally do, they enticed Keefe D to tell them what happened the night Tupac was shot dead. And we put an ironclad case against him, approach him, and say, here's the deal, Keefe D, we have questions about these murders. If you don't cooperate, you're going to prison for the rest of your life, and so are several members of your family who are caught up in your drug organization. Well, everyone who was involved had long died, including the shooter. And with the extra motivation on the table, you best believe Keefe D sang like a bird for three straight hours. He confesses to his involvement in the murder of Tupac Shakur in Las Vegas in 1996. He tells us that his nephew, Orlando Anderson, was in the same car with him, which was the white Cadillac. Mm -hmm. After truth-telling on his nephew, the drug case against Keefe D was dropped, and he walked away a free man. For many people, this would have been a second chance at life, a chance to start over over again. However, a few years later, in 2011, ex-cop Greg Kading published the book Murder Rap, which highlighted Keefe D's confession in detail. Greg Kading is an author and former Los Angeles Police Department detective. He is best known for working on a multi-law enforcement task force that investigated the murders of Tupac and Biggie Small. Apart from that, he was instrumental in getting Keefe D to spill the beans on Tupac's murder. Greg Kading's book sent shockwaves across the hip-hop world as it implicated some of the industry's biggest names. The most notable name in the book, as we will see later, was none other Sean Combs, alias P. Diddy. With the book and subsequently Keefe D's story gripping audiences across the nation and the world, the ex-gangster became envious. In his mind, this was his story. He deserved a piece of the pie for having let the world know what happened to their beloved artist. To add salt to injury, in 2015, four years after the book was published, it spun off a documentary. He must have felt jealous that people were making money from what he considered his story. While he got his name soiled and his reputation destroyed for breaking the street code and cooperating with the feds, the cops were making bank. According to Greg Kading, Keefe D resented the fact that someone else other than him was telling the world the story. If you understand the ego of Keefe D, he resented that somebody else was telling the story other than him. Well, Keefe D decided to do the unthinkable. He decided to publicly start truth-telling, and this was the beginning of the end for him. He appeared on multiple podcasts where he openly gave the horrific details that led to the death of Tupac. According to Greg Kading, his desire to want to own the story and tell it himself led him to publicly speak about what happened in 1996. But if you understand the ego of Keefe D, he resented that somebody else was telling the story other than him. And so that whole thing prompted him to then go out and publicly boast. Um, about his involvement. Keefe D appeared on any podcast or show that would have him, and he would repeat his whole routine of exposing the tragic events that led to Tupac's death. So why would he do this without a care in the world? What gave Keefe D the false sense of bravado? Well, as it turns out, that apart from having an ego, there were other factors that led him to snitch on himself. Popular YouTuber DJ Vlad revealed in a recent interview that one of the reasons Keefe D agreed to appear on Vlad TV, a channel with over 5 million subscribers, and share the story, was that he thought that he had immunity from prosecution from the proffer agreement that he made with feds in 2008. Well, I think that he believed that he had a level of immunity when he did the proffer agreement. It is important to note that a proffer agreement is an agreement between the feds and a defendant that ensures government attorneys will not use any statements the defendant makes during an off-the-record interview against them in later proceedings. Keefe D should have spoken to his attorney before heading to interviews thinking that he had immunity, while Keefe D's words to the feds in 2008 can't be used against him. What he did not know was that anything he said outside the interview room was fair game and would be used to prosecute him. In an interview, Greg Kading spoke about the proffer agreement between Keefe D and the feds saying, the proffer agreement simply said that when you sit down and talk to us, whatever you say that is self-incriminating, we won't use against you. But when he leaves that room, that agreement doesn't apply to everything else in his life, as he erroneously believed. So he began to go out and boast about his involvement in the murder. None of that's protected under the agreement. He has essentially talked himself right into jail. Apart from that, DJ Vlad disclosed that another reason that gave Keefe D the false sense of confidence was that he had been diagnosed with cancer and he knew that he did not have long to live. Uh, I also, I think at the time, he was saying that he had cancer, so maybe he didn't think he had uh, much time to live. Uh, so he was just kind of letting it loose at, at that point. So confident was Keefe D that in 2019, he published his memoir titled Compton Street Legend, where he provided more details to claims he had previously told the feds. What the ex-gangster overlooked is that the feds are always watching podcasts, waiting for criminals such as himself to incriminate themselves. But it wasn't until 2018 
that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media outlets. Another question you may be asking is whether or not Keefe D will actually end up in jail. Remember, in his confession to the feds in 2008, as well as his admissions and interviews all point to his nephew as the gunman. Well, aiding and abetting in Nevada is when you act as an accomplice in a crime, and knowingly aiding and abetting makes you liable for the crimes you help commit. And you face the same penalties that the principals do. In this case, the shooter could have been charged with murder. Upon Keefe D's arrest, he was charged with one count of murder with a deadly weapon and with the intent to promote further or assist a criminal gang. Mind you, at the time of Tupac's death, Keefe D was the leader of the Southside Compton Crips gang. The ex-gangster knew that his goose was cooked and that it was only a matter of time before he was arrested. This is evident from his conversation with a cop during his arrest. In his words, he's involved in the biggest case in Las Vegas history and drops the exact date of Tupac's murder. So what they got you for, man? Oh yeah? Like recent? Everyone agrees that it's time that Keefe D answers for his sins. In fact, many would want to see him live out the rest of his days locked up. In his book, he shows no remorse for his actions as he writes. I stand firm on the point that Tupac, Suge Knight, and the rest of those niggas didn't have any business putting their hands on my beloved nephew, Baby Lane, period. Them jumping on my nephew gave us the ultimate green light to do something to their ass. Tupac chose the wrong game to play and the wrong niggas to play with. Suge and them should have done a better job of protecting that dude because they knew who the fuck we were and the kind of shit we were capable of. Tupac may not have known, but Suge and his peeps definitely knew. Tupac was a guppy that got swallowed up by some ferocious sharks. He shouldn't have ever got involved in that bullshit of trying to be a thug. As he appears before court, the hip-hop world can only hope that justice is served once and for all. Deadly feud. With the whole world now focused on Keefe D, one may ask, who exactly is this man? Since he is not in the music business, he is mostly unknown to many hip-hop enthusiasts, especially the younger generation. Keefe D was born on June 14, 1963, and was an intriguing figure in the crime world with ties to the California-based gang, the Southside Compton Crips. His life story is a mosaic of experiences that span gang affiliations, personal losses, and a significant time spent behind bars. Coming from a family of six brothers and six sisters, Keefe D's upbringing was shaped by a backdrop of gang culture. His mother died from colon cancer in 1980 when he was only 15. In his 2018 memoir, Keefe D revealed that in 2014, he got the same cancer that killed his mother, which may have emboldened him to come clean on his role in Tupac's death. Fortunately or unfortunately, he is now in remission, which means that if found guilty, he may live out the rest of his life in jail. Apart from losing his mom to cancer, Keefe D also lost two of his brothers, one from cancer and the other was shot in the streets of Compton. The tragic loss of one of his older brothers to a fatal shooting incident cast a shadow on his life journey. His life took a tumultuous turn as he found himself entangled in the world of crime. This path led him to spend over a decade within the walls of both state and federal prisons. His involvement in a range of criminal activities, notably the act of emptying two clips into the residence of a rival gang member, reflects the intense conflicts and rivalries that characterized his surroundings. His life in crime started way back in 1971 when he started getting involved with the Crips. As it turns out, it was due to peer pressure as that was what all the boys in the neighborhood were doing. Later, he got a job working in Compton College. However, the money was not coming as fast as he had hoped, and that's when he turned to selling drugs, which turned out to be what he had expected money-wise. Eventually, the law would catch up to him, and he went to prison for dealing from 1985 to 1989. However, according to him, the time in prison didn't rehabilitate him, but instead made him a hardened gangster. After getting out of jail, Keefe D was soon involved in the hip-hop industry with connections to iconic rapper Eazy E and former drug kingpin Harry O, showing how powerful he became in the rap industry. Harry O is among the co-founders of Death Row Records, the record label that launched the careers of rap legends Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Tupac Shakur. He had been behind bars since 1988 for attempted murder and kidnapping until former President Donald Trump came to his rescue and cut his sentence seven years short in 2021. Harry O was not the only Death Row co-founder that Keefe D had ties to. As he has revealed multiple times, Keefe D and the infamous Suge Knight grew up together and, as we will see, would end up resenting each other. According to Keefe D, he first met Death Row Records co 
founder when he was nine years old. As it turns out, their relationship dates back to their younger years when they played Pop Warner football together. Keefe D's role as a running back complemented Suge Knight's position as center, providing a glimpse into their earlier friendship and shared experiences. However, this would turn sour when Keefe D met Sean Love Combs, alias P. Diddy, and formerly known as Puff Daddy. The origins of their relationship trace back to a moment when Keefe D lent a lowrider to Usher for one of his music videos. The lowrider, loaned by Keefe D and his associates, bore the brunt of the Usher's dance performance. Luckily, Diddy took responsibility and personally funded the repair of the vehicle and later sparked off a friendship with Keefe D. At the time, Diddy had founded Bad Boy Records, which was in competition with Death Row Records. However, before drama between the two labels started, P. Diddy and Suge Knight were actually friends. In an interview, Diddy revealed that the Death Row boss would even pick him up from the airport. Because homeboy, me and him were, were, were friends. Wow. And Suge, yeah, yeah, he wow. would pick me up from the airport. Diddy would soon learn that the two music executives were not friends in 1995 during the Second Source Awards when Suge dissed him. To give some context regarding the infamous night, it is important to remember that this was a pretty huge deal in the hip-hop industry as Source was among the most, if not the most famous, hip-hop magazine at the time. Therefore, the who's who in rap attended. From Nas to Wu-Tang, the hip-hop community had gathered for the award show at Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. However, there was one major absentee Tupac. At the time, he was serving time for a sexual abuse case against him. On November 30th, 1994, while in New York recording music, Tupac was robbed and shot. He alleged that he had been set up by people connected to Diddy's label, which would lead to the feud between Bad Boy and Death Row. The beef escalated the night of the awards when the Death Row co-founder took the stage to accept an award and gave a speech that would ultimately lead to some of the worst events in hip-hop history. Any artists out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. That was a direct shot at P. Diddy, who had a habit of appearing in his artist's videos and music. Tensions were high that night. However, P. Diddy took the stage, and instead of clapping back at Death Row, he extended an olive branch. I'm the executive producer that a comment was made about a little bit earlier. But con check this out. Contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Shook Knight for their accomplishment. It seems Diddy wanted peace, or maybe that is what he wanted them to think. Events that took place over the next two years saw the deaths of hip-hop's finest rappers, Tupac and Biggie, as Diddy and Keefe D found themselves at the center of it all. Things did not get any better after Tupac came back from jail and released arguably the most brutal diss track in hip-hop, Hit Em Up. Apart from that, on September 24th, 1995, the night Suge slapped Diddy at a party in Atlanta at the Platinum House nightclub. Although Diddy wanted to get back at Death Row, he was afraid of Suge Knight. So he turned to the one man who he knew was not afraid of his nemesis, the leader of the Southside Compton Crips. With Keefe D's backing, Diddy started toying with the idea of killing the Death Row CEO. By Keefe D's account, Zip Combs and himself discussed the hit on Shakur once at a concert in Anaheim and a couple of times at Greenblatt's Deli on the Sunset Strip. He took me downstairs and he's like, man, I want to get rid of them dudes, man. I was like, we'll wipe their ass out quick, man. It's nothing. Keefe D revealed to the feds. At first, Diddy only wanted Shook dead. However, as Keefe D revealed to the feds after Tupac made the brutal diss track aimed at bad boy records he was added to the kill list when Combs asked about Shakur and Knight would he always say both of them a detective can be heard asking Keefe D during the interrogation he added the boy Shakur on after he made a record the ex-gangster replied before that it was just Suge Knight and then after hit him up came out the detective asked and Keefe D replied saying yeah yeah that pissed Combs off the first physical confrontation between the two camps came in March 1996 when a scuffle broke out at the Soul Train Music Awards in Los Angeles after Notorious bodyguard brand Bro, so you're basically trying to tell me if Diddy wants you gone, he can pretty much get you gone permanently, bro. Just because just because Tupac made a diss track, Diddy added him to the hit list. If if that's not crazy, I don't know what is, bro. But at the end of the day, Diddy has uh, had a whole bunch of allegations on his name. Diddy has had allegations on his, on his name ever since he started blowing up. You get what I mean? Ever since the beginning, ever since the beginning of his career, he's always had he's, he's always had crazy allegations. So it's just like years, years, pretty sure 20, 30 years or currently, bro. He's the, these allegations are just racking up. You get what I mean? It's just becoming a bookshelf. So when you see certain people come out and say the most crazy outlandish things about diddy like bro you're gonna think it's true you get what i mean I'm me automatically i'm automatically gonna think 
it's true because Diddy already has so many allegations and a lot of them, I mean a lot of them, are proven. You get what I mean? Like, bro, just do your research. I mean, just do the research and it's all there. And you can even watch videos like this that just dig into the truth and they'll actually show you evidence. And it's just actually crazy, bro. Like, Diddy, I don't know how Diddy is not locked up. Apparently, he's a gatekeeper. Um, he's 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 one of the most powerful men in the industry, you could say. But I don't know, man. Brandished a weapon in front of an armed member of Shakur's entourage backstage at the Shrine Auditorium. Although no one was harmed, a few months later, the first casualty of the beef would be recorded. In August that same year, a handful of Southside Crips beat and robbed one of Shakur's Mob Peru Bloods bodyguards at a mall in Lakewood. The assailant snatched a diamond-studded death row medallion from the victim's neck. The next confrontation between the two groups would prove deadly and would involve two childhood friends, Keefe D and Suge Knight. The Southside Crips had a regular tradition of going to Las Vegas to watch Mike Tyson fight. On September 7th, 1996, they found their way to Nevada to watch Mike Tyson fight Bruce Seldon. After the fight, Keefe D and the Crips planned to meet in the cafe at the MGM Grand, but Orlando Anderson, alias Baby Lane, his nephew, didn't show up. Then some 118 East Coast Crips came and told us that they saw some death row jump on my nephew down by the casino, he told cops. Surveillance footage shows death row affiliates surrounding and beating up Baby Lane. After hearing that his nephew had been jumped, Keefe D revealed that the beef had become personal and decided to retaliate immediately. After Tupac, Suge, and them death row was jumped on my nephew Baby Lane, the shit became ominously personal, Keefe D wrote in his book. Keefe D, together with three others, decided to go to Club 662 for a death row after party where Tupac was supposed to perform. The three others included Terrence Brown, alias T. Brown, DeAndre Smith, alias Dre, and Baby Lane. T. Brown was the driver that night while Keefe D sat next to him. Behind his uncle was Baby Lane. Behind the driver sat Dre. He wrote that he first planned to confront Knight, whom he had long known. But after Tupac and Knight didn't show up for an hour and a half, Keefe D called his crew off. Lucky for them, they never showed up because it would have been like Al Capone's Valentine's Day Massacre if they had, he wrote. On their way home, the group stopped to buy alcohol. Keefe D revealed that he put the Glock that he intended to use in the back of his car. They hopped back in the car and headed to their house. On the way, they saw Tupac with half of his body hanging out of a BMW, waved to fans who were calling his name. They turned their Cadillac around and followed the BMW, stopping right next to them at a traffic light. The occupant in both cars looked at each other for a split second. Tupac then started to reach for his gun, and according to Keefe D, that's when the fireworks started. The shooter, seated at the back of the Cadillac, rolled down the window and rapidly fired gunshots at Tupac's BMW. One of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back, he wrote in his memoir. The rapper was hit four times, twice in the chest, once in the arm, once in the thigh. One of the bullets went into Shakur's right lung. Knight was hit in the head by fragmentation. They then drove off and even saw the two ambulances carrying Tupac night. The group ditched their Cadillac and then popped bottles and partied like it was any other night. At the hospital, Shakur was heavily sedated, was placed on life support machines, and was ultimately put under a medically induced coma after repeatedly trying to get out of bed. While in the critical care unit on the afternoon of Friday, September 13, 1996, Shakur died of respiratory failure that led to cardiac arrest after the removal of his right lung. Everyone who was at the crime scene refused to cooperate with the cops, meaning they had little to no lead. As it turns out, Death Row wanted to retaliate the old school way. The following year, Christopher George Latore Wallace, alias Biggie Smalls, was shot and killed outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles after a Soul Train Music Awards party. It is believed that Suge Knight ordered the hit. Hip Hop World Reacts. Keefe D's arrest has sparked conversations as celebrities continue to chime into the story. One of the most notable voices is that of the man who was with Tupac the day he was shot, Suge Knight. Given that he saw the occupants in the white Cadillac, yet he refused to cooperate with the cops. Many people were skeptical and even thought that he may have heard a hand in Tupac's death. This rumor started after news spread that Pac was about to leave Death Row Records. His album titled Don Caluminati, The Seven Day Theory was the last album he had to do for Death Row Records. After this, he allegedly planned to work on his new record company called Machiavelli Records. With Pac gone, Death Row Records wasn't going to make any money off of him. So if they killed him, everything related to him would get them a whole lot of cash, and they would now have all of his unreleased songs that they would release under their label on soundtracks, compilation albums, and possibly even new albums. This rumor was further fueled when Gaddafi, who famously appeared on the diss track Hit Him Up, agreed to testify. The night Tupac was shot, Gaddafi was riding in the car behind Shakur's and witnessed the shooting. He initially refused to cooperate with police, but later said, 
said he could possibly identify the assailants. However, on November 10, 1996, he was shot once in the head and died in Orange, New Jersey. Gaddafi's death seemed a little too convenient as people suspected foul play involving death row. To add salt to injury, another rumor started circulating claiming that Tupac was alive. Well, this rumor was started by none other than, you guessed it, Suge Knight. In 2014, while leaving a West Hollywood nightclub, a TMZ camera rolled up on the former death row records kingpin and he spilled the beans. First, he clarified that he did not shoot the late rapper as many people suspected. Everybody knows off the top, I ain't the nigga kill Tupac. I'm the nigga protected Tupac, he said. He ended his verbal tirade by saying, Tupac's not dead. You know he's somewhere smoking a Cuban cigar. This was not the first time the death row co-founder said something that raised eyebrows regarding Tupac's death. In a 2017 documentary, he said, when I left that hospital, me and Pac was laughing and joking. So I don't see how somebody could turn from doing well to doing bad, which hinted at the rapper's condition being stable. The rumor that he had faked his death was supported by many theories. First, Tupac was a big fan of the great thinker Niccolo Machiavelli, who famously said, to fool one's enemies, fake one's death. In the book, the Prince Machiavelli discusses how a ruler can protect himself from enemies who are too powerful to confront directly. He suggests that a ruler could pretend to be dead, allowing his enemies to lower their guard and then strike back when the time is right. Is this what Tupac did? Well, the hip-hop legend's aunt is political activist and former Black Liberation Army member Asada Shakur, who escaped prison and fled to Cuba after being convicted for the murder of a state trooper. She was granted political asylum in Cuba in 1984, where she has lived ever since. Well, rumor had it that after the shooting, Tupac, fearing his life under threats from rival gangs and growing tired of fame, faked his own death and went to live in Cuba. To top it all off, there's also the strange fact that the person who cremated Tupac's body retired afterward and hasn't been seen since. Well, with all this information, what was Suge Knight's reaction to Kiffy D's arrest? He spoke to TMZ from a California prison, where he's serving a 28-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter. I'm surprised, for one, because I never thought Kiffy D would get arrested. Whatever the circumstances, if he had an involvement in anything, if he didn't have any involvement in anything, I wouldn't wish somebody going to prison on my worst enemy, he said. He was then asked whether he would testify against him. Keep in mind that Kiffy D revealed in his memoir that when the white Cadillac pulled up next to the BMW at the traffic light, he and his childhood friend locked eyes just before the shots were fired. As many people expected, the Death Row Records co-founder revealed that he would be testifying against Kiffy D. 1,000%, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't testify, none of that shit, he told TMZ. This is perfectly understandable as he was currently in jail. If the inmates got wind that he was cooperating with the cops as a witness, his stay in jail would be very unpleasant. He would be attacked or even worse, killed since ratting people out is unacceptable behavior in jail. What is shocking about the death row co-founder's reaction to the arrest is that he still denied that Baby Lane pulled the trigger. I never had nothing bad to say about Orlando because he wasn't the shooter, he said. Does he know something that we don't? Is he calling cap on Kifi D's version of events? Well, we may never know. On the other hand, Tupac's sister, Sikiwa Shakur, rejoiced at the news of the arrest after so many years. She took to Instagram with a brief message, adding that her family is seeking real justice on all fronts. This is no doubt a pivotal moment. The silence of the past 27 years surrounding this case has spoken loudly in our community. It's important to me that the world, the country, the justice system, and our people acknowledge the gravity of the passing of this man, my brother, my mother's son, my father's son. His life and death matters and should not go unsolved or unrecognized. So yes, today is a victory, but I will reserve judgment until all the facts and legal proceedings are complete. She then hinted at more arrests being made in the case as she wrote, there have been multiple hands involved and there remains so much surrounding the life and death of my brother Tupac and our Shakur family overall. We are seeking real justice on all fronts. Also reacting to the development, Moprem Shakur, the rapper's older brother, called the arrest bittersweet for a number of reasons. While speaking to TMZ, he said, the time of course, 27 years. It didn't have to be this way. It didn't have to happen at all. I hate to even have to live in the reality that my brother's not here. Justice is accountability. That's the sweet part in the bittersweet. And I'm bracing because it ain't over. Jada Pinkett Smith, who has long publicly praised her childhood friendship and alleged romance with Tupac Shakur, also took to Instagram with a reaction. Now I hope we can get some answers and have some closure. Rest in peace, Pat, she posted on her IG story. Apart from his family, close associates, and former lovers, fellow rappers weighed in on the situation. Rapper Ice-T could not bring himself to understand why it had taken so long to arrest Keefe D, yet he snitched on himself very many times. While on an interview, Ice-T said, I think the cops knew exactly how this thing played out. I just don't really understand why it took law enforcement so long because if I say that I'm in a car with somebody that does something, I'm part of the crime. If I go over to your house and ask you for a gun and you give it to me and I go do it, you aided and abetted the crime. He also could not understand why Keefe D was snitching on himself if he didn't want to get caught. So my point is that with all the interviews and all the books where dude just happened to say it 100 times on interviews he did, why would you say that if you didn't want to get caught? So, you know, I got no love for the dude. It was a chain of events that
that should not have ever happened. It's all out of my realm of understanding, the rapper said. 50 Cent also chimed in with a dig aimed at P. Diddy through an Instagram post where he told Diddy to lawyer up. Damn so packed. Got lined by Brother Love. LOL time to lawyer up, shit, it might get sticky, 50 Cent posted. There have been numerous reports, including from Keefe D, claiming that Diddy offered $1 million for his two nemeses to get killed. However, Keefe D revealed that he never got his cut of the money. In fact, he also claims that Diddy ghosted him after that. Seemingly. But yeah, man, without further ado, though, gonna end the video here. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section and subscribe for more content. But overall, Keefe D did definitely get his money. I'm pretty sure he got his million. Pretty sure he got a million dollars from that whole situation. If he didn't get paid, bro would, bro would go crazy. You get what I mean? But overall, he did get paid. But did he did in fact ghost him right after that. You get what I mean? He gave him, a, gave him his million dollars, ghosted him and said, hey, take this million and i'm gone you get what i mean i want nothing i want nothing to do with you anymore pretty much and it's just like yeah kvd wasn't really happy with he was happy with it at first but but it's just like as years pass by he's getting older he found out he has cancer and all these things it's just like you can't even throw me a bone like oh i already spent like if you get what i mean he spent the million it's been i don't even know how many years it's been years and it's just like all his money's gone. You get what I mean? All his, all the money that Diddy gave him is gone. And, and, and now he's just like, I killed Tupac for you. You can't even throw me a bone. Like, you know, throw me a little bit of cash. Help me out a little bit. Like, nope, Diddy ain't helping you out anymore. You get what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, bro, he basically gave up and just decided, hey, I'm, I'm just going to start snitching on myself. I don't even have that much time to live anymore anyway. So it's just like, yeah, man, overall crazy 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 situation and you know there's a lot of conspiracies of what might have happened as well you get what i mean um tupac was gonna leave his label they didn't like that maybe they allowed allowed the um shooting to happen simply because you know they know they know the benefit of it because if if he dies then that means he he's pretty much stuck with the label forever and they're just gonna keep making money off of him and he can't really leave, you get what I mean, simply because he's he's dead, he's passed away, you get what I mean, but overall, bro, crazy, crazy situation, and, you know, Diddy, not a good human being, <laughs> yeah, let's just say that, I'm not gonna dig too deep into the whole Diddy situation, like I said, but, you know, when you see things like this about Diddy, uh, yeah, you can't really deny it, you can't really say, oh, that's not true, you get what I mean, because it's Diddy, it's Diddy, bro. Like, come on. You can't really say, oh, can't really brush it off and say, oh, that's not true. Nope. You, you know what I mean? Like, nope. Nope. Diddy is the most, like, D Diddy is just crazy, bro. He does the most outlandish things, and it's just like, yeah, bro, there's no defending this guy. If you get what I mean, anybody who defends him, bro, you're with the stuff that he's with. Let's just say that. But without further ado, though, going to end the video here. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, and subscribe for more content. Peace out.